Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. Today is actually not going to be beauty related whatsoever. This is actually going to be uh, a more serious topic, um, something that I've never addressed on my channel before. Um, it's something that has affected me very recently and kind of changed the course of things that I'm most passionate about at this moment. Um, so I have been a little bit absent um, from all things beauty related basically because of um, this new organization that I've recently uh, basically joined. So if you have followed me on any other form of social media, you probably have an inkling as to what's been going on with me and what I may be addressing right now. You probably have some sort of idea of where I'm going with this. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, I just kind of wanted to bring this subject to light just so you can um, get to know my situation a little bit better. Obviously bring some more awareness to this topic that I'm going to mention. And um, I'm also going to be providing information below on how you can get involved, get connected, and help the cause. Um, so basically, I am going to just talk to you about what's been going on in my life and um, hopefully I don't ramble too much but I just feel like this is a really important topic that people aren't talking about and really needs to be talked about so I'm just gonna go ahead and kick it right off so um, for those that don't know I recently lost my dad to lung cancer um, it was in February that he passed um, it's still something that's really hard for me to talk about. I haven't talked about much, um, but I recently got involved with a organization called Longevity. Um, a lot of you have probably seen my posts. I'm constantly posting about this organization now. They're like the leading organization for lung cancer research. Um, so, you know, at first after I lost my dad, I was really angry and confused and upset, obviously, and grieving, and I'm still grieving, but um, I finally just started channeling my energy into positive things, like what can I do? You know, my dad was, for those of you that knew him, know that he was absolutely one of a kind, and he was like the biggest badass, tough, take no shit kind of guy, and stood up for whatever he believed in, whether people thought it was right or wrong, or he would say whatever he wanted to say, whether you agreed with him or not, he didn't care. It was what he felt was right. He would always stand up for you, no matter whether he, if, if he loved you, he would stand up for whatever you believed in and back you on what you wanted to do, whether he maybe really supported it or not, because that's just the kind of guy that he was. You know, I always tell my mom and my sister, you know, there was times that, you know, there would be something that I would want to say to someone or something I would really want to do. And maybe my mom and sister were like, I don't know, Rach, you might want to think about that. You might want to not, you know, really say that or, you know, push anyone's buttons. And my dad would be like, no, nah, screw that, Rach, you know, you do you. I, I got your back. Uh, you know, I don't care what these people say. I'm behind you 100% and I don't care, I'm in your corner. So I started reflecting back after he passed on things that he had said to me. And it was like, you know what, screw cancer, screw this shit. I got his back now, you know, he may be gone now and I can't care for him in this world like I was and, but now I can do it in a different way. And my mission basically now is to make sure that nobody else has to go through what my family went through and what we're going through and losing my dad. And I want to follow this fight to end lung cancer because for those of you that don't know, it's the leading cancer killer worldwide, or at least in the United States. Sorry, I might be getting ahead of myself, but it is the leading cancer um, killer. And there's, I mean, it's it's taking more lives annually that more than the four other leading like cancers, the the four most deadly cancers, which is uh, breast cancer, colorectal or colorectal colon cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer, and what is the other one? I am blanking, but I will put that stat that little tidbit below. But um, there the 
the reason this is is because there's such a stigma that's linked with lung cancer and basically people think oh lung cancer you smoked you did this to yourself so sorry you know people don't fund it like they do breast cancer colon cancer pancreatic cancer all these other cancers because there's such a stigma but what you probably don't know is that 60 to 65 percent of people that are newly diagnosed with lung cancer have never smoked or they're former smokers so um that's huge that's that's something that people really need to understand you know um there needs to be more funding only six percent of federal um basically the uh, the federal money that goes towards cancer research only six percent of that is going towards lung cancer and that's what's killing the most people cancer wise so it's like why why is this happening why you know there's so many people i'm learning more and more that i research this cancer that people that are getting this have never smoked a day in their life they participate in triathlons they're marathon runners they're swimmers they're athletes they're you know avid health conscious people and they're still getting it there's just not enough research and i talk to people and they tell me, oh, you know, everyone has their vices. You know, if they do smoke, they're like, this is something I don't have to worry about until later. And I understand that, you know, this isn't something that you're going to be passionate about like me until you stare it directly in the eyes and see it take someone that you love as rapidly as it does. My dad was diagnosed uh, in August 2015 um, and was gone by February 2016. Uh, like I said, he was the strongest, toughest guy I ever knew, and that's my dad. You know, he's my hero. He's who I looked up to the most in the world, you know, especially being the baby girl of the family. You know, you look at your dad like he's superhuman, and to see how quickly this disease took him away from me, it's an eye-opener. It's like, holy shit, wow. Here I thought, oh, you know, he'll have some treatment, he'll have a surgery, uh, he'll go into remission. It might come back, but then we'll treat it again. You know, it'll just be a constant battle, but he's got this, no problem. And the, re the reality of it was is that once you have symptoms of lung cancer, it's basically too late. Um, it is very, very rare for people to catch it early because you don't have symptoms. Usually when people catch it early, it's by accident. Like I've heard of people that um, went to have another surgery or an x-ray of something and then discovered it that way. Um, unfortunately, when my dad found out that he had it, it was already in late stage. Um, and by then, once it's late stage or once you have the symptoms, only 17% of people will make it to see five years. Um, so the survival rate is really, really bad. Um, but thanks to longevity, which is a big reason why I am so excited to be a part of this organization, six drugs were um, basically approved in 2015 because of our funding and because of our research. Um, so it's good news. So there's a lot of drugs that are available now that weren't available. And our goal is basically to help um, treat this disease as a chronic disease in the future, such as HIV AIDS, um, diabetes, things like that. Things that people, it's a chronic condition, but they can live with them. There's treatments that can um, basically extend their life. So um, I've partnered up with Longevity, and we are currently working on a 5K fun run walk in Cincinnati. It's going to be on November 20th. Um, and so this is really exciting for me because I love being hands-on. I, I want to raise awareness for people because... The biggest thing for me is how little awareness there is. You know, like I grew up with parents that smoked all my life. I, I, you know, I knew that it was bad and I hated that my parents did it. But even being someone that knew smoking was really bad for you, I still didn't realize how really, you know, how, what lung cancer, how bad it really can be. And then being on this side of it now and working with this organization, I didn't realize how many people get diagnosed that have never smoked or touched a cigarette in their life. Now we're finding out that it can be hereditary, which is horrifying for me because I found out that someone on my dad's side had it and now my dad had it and now I'm terrified like, oh great, this could be 
even, you know, hereditary for me. So this isn't something that I realized. And, you know, this is something people don't know. And my goal personally, if there's anything, like the big goal futuristically that I would really like to achieve is um, for people to have uh, regular lung screenings because, you know, with all these other cancers, we have regular mammograms for women to detect breast cancer. We have um, yearly exams for women for cervical cancer. We have uh, colonoscopies for to detect colon cancer. We have, um, I mean, stress tests for heart disease. You know, the, the list goes on and on and on, a regular screenings that we have to, you know, detect for early detection on other cancers. But why aren't we getting regular lung screenings when that's the leading cancer killer? I don't know. I have some, uh, a personal vendetta with my parents uh, and their regular care doctor, that their primary care doctor, physician, whatever you want to call them, because Although people, again, I don't want to rule just smokers into this group because it's everyone collectively can be affected by this now. Um, but you would think, okay, say, say your family, breast cancer runs in your family and your doctor knows this. Shouldn't they be screening you regularly more than the average bear for breast cancer because it is so common in your family? You would think, yes, okay. So my parents, as much as they've smoked their entire life, wouldn't you think that their primary care physician would be giving them regular lung screenings knowing that they're, you know, smokers? You would think, but that's not the case. That needs to change. People need to be getting regular screenings. I want to start getting regular screenings. People just should in general because now we're finding out, like I said earlier, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but that people that are athletes and have never smoked are getting it. You know, like I said, 60 to 65% of newly diagnosed people aren't smokers or they stopped smoking years ago. So this is something that needs to change. This is something that people need to be getting screened for. And that overall is my biggest goal. And I, it's my biggest hope is that I can help spread um, some awareness and shed some light on this really a horrible, awful disease that I hope doesn't affect any of you that are watching. I hope you never have to witness anything that my family has gone through. And I hope that you never have to go through or see someone go through what my dad went through. It's horrific. Can't even, I can't even go there. So, but I, on a positive note, am working with longevity. We're working on this run and we need lots of help. Like I said, only 6% of government funding goes into lung cancer research. And um, so basically it's myself and three other amazing women who have also lost parents to this disease are um, putting this together and we need a lot of help. Um, we are just starting from basically the ground, ground zero. Um, we need sponsors and participants and anything down to DJs, um, an announcer, just everything that you can think of, you know, we need water for the runners and walkers, we need snacks, we need just everything. So um, I'm going to put links down below on how you can get involved. Um, you can also participate. Obviously, we'd love to see all of your lovely faces uh, down at the park, and I will put the location down below as well. Um, and you can even get a team together. So, you know, if someone... Um, that you know, or if you've been affected by it like myself, and I hope you haven't, but you can, you know, round up your family and um, start a team and, you know, raise money or, you know, your workplace, you can start a team and collect money. Like uh, my work personally, we do um, every Thursday, you can dress down and wear jeans if you donate $3 and collectively as a company, um, we decide every once in a while where the money goes to which charity and then the company matches it. That's a really good idea for other companies to get involved, even if it's just, you know, um, like a dress down day and then you can donate the money. Any little bit we really could use. This is something that's really, really important. And uh, I really just wish that I could just take a little piece of my heart and just spread it all around and make everyone care and uh, be as passionate as I am because, like I said, it's it's the leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and I just really want to change that. I just really want. Sorry, I don't mean to get teary. Um, hmm. 
with this, I just really want to change it. I just really want to make sure that no one has to go through this again. And I just want to turn around the survival rate. I want to make a difference. I want this to be, you know, what I do to um, honor my dad. This is the biggest thing that I can do is, you know, have his back now like he always had mine I want to change this and I I never want any of you to feel how I feel missing him and seeing this happen and as quickly as it did you know um you know the biggest thing especially being his daughter is you know I'm not married I don't have children so these are things that he is going to miss. You know, I won't have my dad there to walk me down the aisle. He's not going to hold my babies. He's not going to meet my future husband. He's not, you know, going to be around for these things. And it's awful. And um, I just don't want anyone else to go through them. And I know that other cancers cause that. And I know that, unfortunately, other people have gone through that in different ways. And I wish that that weren't the case. But with this organization we can make a difference we can change it like I said there's already been six other drugs that have been approved just in 2015 so we're making moves and this isn't an organization where all of the donations and all of the money raised goes to salaries it's not like that um, it's all going into research um, I'll put their website down below but you can see all of the different doctors and uh, research that they're funding and it's incredible so um, for those of you out there that have been touched by this horrific disease and for those of you that hopefully it doesn't touch but if you have been affected by it if you know someone that's been affected by it just know that there's people out there that are doing something about it there's hope there's there's gonna be a change i don't care if it's 40 years from now if you look um, one of the women from longevity that i talked to when i first was getting involved she said if you look just in the last 40 years, look at HIV AIDS and breast cancer and how the survival rate was back then and how, you know, it was basically a death sentence. And now look, there's like the survival rate is through the roof. Unfortunately, we're still losing people to that. Um, but, you know, people are living with it. People are, you know, surviving. And I just know deep down in my heart if we can you know, really get awareness and really get people getting regular screenings and really get funding that that will be the case. And, you know, that won't be such a scary diagnosis anymore. It'll be scary, but you'll know that you have a chance and that, you know, you can live with it. You can survive. And um, so that's my goal. I'm sorry to get teary and, you know, make such a video of, or a video of such a serious topic but it's something that needs to be talked about and now that I have this little platform um, I just feel like it's my duty now I feel like you know I almost feel like my dad passed the torch to me like you know I have his strength I have his balls I have his no take no shit mentality and sorry to say I have his balls that sounds really <laughs> freaking weird but uh, you know, I just have this take no shit mentality. So it's like, you know what, if anyone's going to do it, if, if there's anything that I can do, you know, that's, you know, I hate that I'm in this situation, but if I'm going to be in this situation, I'm going to stand up for the other people going through it and I'm going to be their voice. I'm going to be my dad's voice and I'm going to make some shit happen. So, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to put all my information below in the info box. If you want to get involved, if, you know, even if you just want to reach out and need someone to talk to, I've been through it. I've been through that hell. And, you know, if there's anything that I've learned from this is it's I have the tools now to help people. I can relate and I understand. And there's nothing in the world that would make me more happy than to be there for you because, you know, going through that situation, you feel really alone. And, you know, there's a lot of people that you lose along the way because they don't understand or they just don't want to be around it and it's not fun anymore you know there's friends that disappear because you're not the fun party friend anymore because life gets real and um, you can feel really alone so uh, it would have been nice to have some sort of support group in that way other than family uh, people on the outside you know that you could talk to and so I'm here for you 
Um, even if it's not lung cancer related, if there's something that you're going through in this sort of realm, I can help. So uh, that's basically all I have to say for today. Um, so for those of you that have been there, thank you so much for reaching out to me and for all your kind words. You really have no idea how much it means to me and all the flowers that were sent. My God, like I can't even... I had no idea I was surrounded by so much love, and that's another reason why I feel so compelled to give back, because I was just at a loss of words as far as that goes, and um, so yeah, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening, and um, please help. <laughs> uh, please get involved. Please, if you know a company that could sponsor, if your company wants to sponsor, if you want to get involved, um, I'm sorry if I'm rambling and repeating myself, but all the information is below. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And that's it. I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be beauty related and not so heavy. But all right.